Hey everybody, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your art sharp, and today I'm going to show you how you can easily paint a really fantastic pine landscape using fan brushes. I got my fans already. Painting these trees are going to be so easy. I'm going to show you how much fun a fan brush is. I'm going to explain everything about how you can create this very easy project yourself, step by step, the whole way through. I'm going to tell you the techniques. I'm going to show you the methods. I'm going to help you mix the colors. I'm going to show you how to use the brush. Just everything you need to know. So even if this is your very first painting, it's going to be perfect for you. On the mic is my husband, John. Hey, guys. He helps me do these live stream classes by switching with all of our cameras, making sure that the camera is zoomed in on what I'm doing so you can see everything for yourself accurately at home. Now, if you check the description, you're going to see a link to our website. I think it says TS and then some numbers. So if you click that, it's going to take you to our traceable because no, you don't have to draw to be able to paint and it's not cheating to use a traceable. It also has a step by step. I really think that printing these out when you do these projects helps you achieve your highest level of success because it keeps the layers and all the order that we do in a painting easy for you to see like we're on this step, we're on this step, making it even easier to break down. You guys ready to just jump on in and get this yep. painting done? I am. Oh yeah, absolutely. All right. So I have here our example piece and you can see this is a ton of fun. I also have my step by step put to the side and ready to help me do my project. Yeah. This is an 11 by 14 artboard. I get these from Michaels. They're the artist love packs. They're just easy to pick up, cheap and economical. And we have some wishes and intentions like we like to do. Um, definitely as we come out of 2019 into 2020, I think that's a really fun thing to do. So love and light to surround Sandra, uh, cure and treatment and compassion for depression and also healing and peace for mothers and daughters is our wishes today. Over here, I have some of the materials that we're going to be using in the project. While, I have, while you're there, I'm, I don't want to surprise you, but I'm going to come stunt hands you because your mic's making just a little bit of noise. Don't worry. I'm going to come over while you're telling them about what's going on, just so I don't sure? surprise you. Yeah. You okay. Go. So over here, I have fan brushes. I have a uh, nice big, um, this is a number six fan brush, and I have a bunch of fours. I have them in hog bristle or a stiff synthetic filament. I also have some artist knives. So these usually come in packs. Mine certainly do. And you could use one like this. You could use one like this. You could use one that looks like the diamond head. That's going to help you do your switching. I've got a nice big wide brush. I have my splattering tools and I have a very special paint for splattering. I'm not going to put it out till I do it. This is golden fluid titanium white. Listen, I love this stuff. It comes in little bottles like this. It's awesome. But if it's not possible to get right now, go ahead and just grab a bottle of craft paint in the white they have titanium white americana does it's really good um i have mars black phthalo green titanium white heavy body that's the kind that comes in the nice big tubes quinacridone magenta and ultramarine blue now on this particular project guys you can easily switch out the colors and make this your own you don't have to stay completely married to what i'm doing though i do highly recommend doing it with me once before you get your creative on surprise tools that will help you that i do have are a uh, artist loft t-square and low tack tape um you can make any masking tape low low tack by just yeah. uh, sticking it up and down to your sofa a bunch of times and then it'll get a bunch of lint on it and it's just an easy way to create low tack tape now before i paint this in i'm going to want to put my little words uh which were done with a watercolor pencil blend those into the canvas those I, little wishes and intentions going I, out into the world i figured out where your mic issue is hmm. i'm gonna have to mic uh, it's it's where it connects at the headset. Uh huh. So I'm gonna have to tighten that up in just a second. Okay. Is it bad? No. Just every once in a while, there's a little crickle. Oh, I'm so sorry. If you guys are hearing there's a crickle, we'll get it fixed. I can fix right the crickle. Right away. So what you see me doing is very lightly wetting the board here, and I'm wetting the board here because it's gonna help my paint flow. If you overdo this, though, what will happen is the board will bend. And um, excuse me, guys, just a second. <laughs> John is readjusting my. Okay. <sighs> all right so john is readjusting my mic all right here we go so you don't want to get this too wet because the board will bend you just want it to be a damp brush it's just going to help the paint flow i'm going to take my paint and pull it out into my brush and pull it out into my brush you can see that loads it on both sides and i'm going to start out by going ahead and putting a white strip in the middle of this canvas going up and down see that's not a problem back and forth pretty easy peasy now right here in the middle 
I'm going to take my pink paint, my quinacridone magenta, which as you can see is this great pink. And I might put a little white into it, but I'm going to come here right to the middle and get a pink strip in. Now I'm going to wipe off my brush and just go ahead and lightly blend out, going down, back and forth, and then lightly blend out, going up, back and forth. So you can see what happens is, is that you have a kind of dark center, right? And then it lightens as it goes out. The big thing for you to do, new painter, new art adventurer, or perhaps experienced art adventurer, is to keep those brush strokes as level as possible because that's what's going to make the water effect that your eye kind of goes, oh, that must be water. I see that right there. Now, I like to rinse this out to get the white out of it. And it can be nice to load up with some just nice pink and come here just a little bit to pink up the center. Make sure it's just a nice pop of pink right there for peeking out of the trees is always good. Rinse, rinse, rinse. Now coming from the top and the bottom, we're gonna add in our white. Now I'm gonna load up my ultramarine into both sides of my brush, and I'll go ahead and get a little bit of white into it. Not too much, but it'll help it cover. And we're gonna go from the top, back and forth, long brush strokes, back and forth, coming down. There we go. And then blending right here. See how it blends? And then I'll bring that back up. There we go. I have, I have a little corner there. It was a little light on the pigment. And you can also come back and forth with your brush lightly to even out or blend any of that that you want to. Flip this over. Same thing, a little bit of white. Some of the blue in there. You could also use phthalo blue if you don't have ultramarine and the piece will be just fine and none the worse for wear. See me grabbing just a little bit of white. I have a bit of water on my brush. What I'm doing as I move very quickly is that I'm making sure there's enough water and enough paint on my brush and I'm working quickly enough so that the paint that's on the canvas remains wet. Acrylic paint blends when it's wet and does not when it's dry, which is actually one of its features. But when you're new to painting, that can be frustrating. I'm just brushing and smoothing and adjusting and getting fussy with my sky. So it's how I like it. Now for the next part, it absolutely is going to have to be dry. So John will talk to you real quick while I dry it. And then I'll show you how you get that perfect horizon line that helps really enforce that this is water that's being reflected into. You guys are gonna love it. Okay, there we go. I couldn't hear myself talk and that was because my mic wasn't working. Okay, wasn't just you guys. So, uh, man, just having all sorts of crazy mic problems. Um, thank you. Thank you guys for coming and hanging out with us. Um, love having you here. Sorry for being a little, uh, shaken by my mics. But, uh, yes, we're... Oh, someone was asking in chat about not getting the same result using their paints as Cinnamon does. So there's a couple things to know. Cinnamon is using, generally speaking, pro paints on the show. And... Those respond much better to uh, water and, uh, a, you know, single stroke. They have higher pigment loads, things like that. So they're going to be much more one responsive to the, that we have on the show. So someone was saying that they, they, uh, their paint doesn't go down the same as yours. And I'm like, well, we use pro paint, pro brushes. There's a lot of reasons that may be happening. There are a lot of reasons it may be happening. Just know every paint kind of has its own personality. Like I very much like golden paint and it's very thick and robust and it has a ton of pigment into it, like almost like loaded double of anything else. And so I really love that. But then I also love Holbein and Holbein has very low drag to the brush and it skid, like it slides right across the canvas beautifully. Every paint has kind of its own personality. I like Senlier uh, acrylic, and it's a little bit water sensitive, but it has also beautiful guide and really amazing pigments in it. Every paint I'm painting Artist Loft today, really fantastic paint. So even if I were to paint an uh, Artist Loft 
you know, beginner level paint, all that that I would do is go, okay, there's less pigment in this paint. It dries a little bit slower. I might have to use glazing techniques more than layering techniques. And that is completely fine. It's just really about knowing your product and going, okay, this is how this is. And I'm going to work within these confines. Remember people used to do like pretty amazing artwork with soot. So it's okay. You got to use what you got. All right. So in here I have, is that good? I don't know if that's good. Yeah, I think that's great. Coffee. All right. I have a tool here. This is called a T-square. And what I like to do is find my horizon line. I approximated about halfway in the middle of my pink stripe. And I'm going to take my little pink chalk here so that, you know, it's not going to be too big. And I'm going to mark a very level line. I highly recommend uh, T-square to aid you in this, but your goal is just to make sure your line is level. Then I'm going to take this fabulous, awesome, amazing tape. But remember, you guys can make your own low-tack tape, how? By tapping this up and down on the sofa. <laughs> so don't run out and buy it. And sometimes artist tape can get pricey. I don't know. It's like gone up in price recently. It's super, super crazy how pricey it's gotten. So what I'm trying to do is just make sure that this is as level as possible because this is what's going to help me create that illusion of water and reflection. So you guys have your stuff taped down? Mm. Hopefully, yes. I, I watched you tape it down. Does that count? Now, these two are both number six fans, and the reason either one is acceptable, and I'll demo this one in a little bit, you know, both of them today, like I'll do this on the reflection and this in the trees, it doesn't really matter, is because the bore bristles in this helps it be stiff enough for heavy bodied acrylic and my special Sherpa white filaments in this. But what you're looking for is a stiff, firm brush, okay? That's what's gonna make the fan work. Anyone who's having any trouble with fans, the reason you're having that trouble is the fan is not stiff enough. Now I've just dipped it in some water and I'm dragging it off. I don't want to get too much extra in there. And I'm going to take a little bit of my green into my brush. And interestingly enough, look, a little bit of my black. Dip just the edge of the bristles in again to get it nice and juicy. And I'm going to do this cool thing. I'm going to tap across, tap, 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 up and down, all the way across. Using my tape, as you can see, to create a very straight, Organize a little line. See, mm -hmm. and this is an up, back and forth, back and forth motion, right? Brush handle is level. It's not up, it's not down, it's level for this part. So you're all good there. And just going across, making sure that we have a nice landscape to work from. Now I'm gonna dip in some water again, get a little bit more green and a little bit more black, because I like that. And I'm gonna make two trees. I'm going to take my brush, very straight up and down to the canvas, held in my hand, and I'm going to just tap up a short little line. That's one tree right there. You don't know that yet, but that's a tree. And then he's going to have a little friend who's going to be over about, let's say, three fingers so we can have some room for the trees to be trees. And I make him taller. Now, once I have that guidance in, I'm going to rock my brush back in my hand, corner to the canvas and just tap up and down, making the top of a little tree. That's all it is, right? When I have that, I'm going to come in and very delicately, notice that I'm rocking the handle at an angle towards the left to only engage this part of the fan to make these shorter little bristles. And then I'm gonna do the same towards the right. See how that keeps me from engaging the whole fan? by rocking it to the corner. Can you catch that on the camera, John? Mm -hmm. All right, now, once I have those beginning branches up, it gets on, I reload, and I'm ready to rock and roll. Let's rock and roll. We're gonna tap up and down. I have a mild upward lift to my handle, but for this particular one, if I'm using a bristle fan, I'm going to stay mostly up and down. Because they have flagged ends and they make this nice fluffy spruce. See how fluffy that spruce is? I do. If you find you're not getting enough paint out, you just dip just the curve in water and come back down, back and forth. Each subsequent branch going down gets longer. And then when you get down to the ground, you go, oh, I've got landscape. Crazy. If you've got the step by step, you see a close up of this happening. Go ahead and print it out. It will really help. What do I do here? Same thing. Corner, handle facing down, just the corner of my brush going up, making the top of the pine. 
then curved to the right, engaging just some, just the corner of my little fan, making little tiny brush, like little tiny tree marks, right? These are little tiny. I'm gonna make little tiny trees. Go up. And then once you have the top of your tree, you can go, yay! Fluff out, little boy, fluff out. <laughs> fluff, 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 fluff. You have leaves. Load up, load up, load up. Guess what we're gonna do here? I'm gonna come here and imply some grasses and bushes and all kinds of interesting leaf things. And how I do that is I'm gonna tap up and down, but I'm gonna curve down. Tap up and down, curving down. Fan is so much fun to use. And I'll come here. Now I have a little bit of bush and some other interesting things that have happened. Mm -hmm. Dip in my water, loading brush, 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 back and forth. What am I gonna do here? Similar thing. Now I might make this one a little bit taller than its friend. Depends on my mood. And then we're also gonna have a shorter little friend maybe over here. That was pretty easy. Curving the brush, handle down, tapping the top of the little tree, making, oh, those little tops. And then activating just the corner to get those delicate top branches, right? Then once we have those delicate top branches, let's bring that full fan to force. Just come down, come down, come down. See, I'm just tapping up and down. This is why everybody love a fan. It is, by the way, makes the most satisfying noise. You're gonna love it. It's gonna completely, totally relax you for this, this time of year. You're gonna be like, oh, I needed that. Hmm. Now, let's come here. Let's hit this little guy again. Just the corner. And look, this is where my brush is. That's how it's supposed to look. Little bit of, little bit of corner, right? Curving the handle, angled left to right. Whatever I gotta do to get the top of those little trees and then boom, 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 boom. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Now this particular one is called a Cambridge fan and it is my other favorite fan outside of my own Art Sherpa fans. Um, but there are other great ones out there. It's just the one I know and happen to like to use. But you might like something else. Now, right here, bush, 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 bush. Guess what we get to do here? More bush. Bush. A little bit of curve and a little bit of bush. And oh, look, now I got all that stuff right there. How is that? <laughs> right? That just came together. Just comes together. Satisfying. Let's zoom in and satisfyingly pull the tape. John, you ready? Oh, that's nice. We're going to pull this tape right off. That's a very satisfying thing to do. By the way, you can save the tape and reuse it. <laughs> I know that's crazy, but if you're using artist tape, you may want to do that. These are reusable. Okay, so I'm put that to the side to save it. Now, this is a good time to get in the reflections. It lets what's up here dry a little bit, and also uh, you might be able to pull some of the color down into it. And for this one, I'm going to demo my personal fan, which is the number six Art Sherpa fan. You could use the same fan all the way through. That would be fine. I'm just showing you how it's, it's not the brush. It's you, the magic is in you. So I'm gonna load up a more of my green, but a little bit of my black, but more of my green, right? And I'm going to turn my canvas on the side and I'm gonna do something sort of interesting, right? I'm gonna come down and I'm wiggling, see I'm wiggling? Yeah. Back and forth a bit. This is how I'm going to mimic some of these little reflection shapes. And I can always pull them down real easy, but I wanna, I wanna pull them out as little, little bits of water reflection. And you can fan across them and get them in there. And here's the trick. If the thing above it is tall, you'll want the reflection to be tall. And then as it gets shorter, right? You might go like that and then just make some shorter reflections. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Notice that what I'm doing here, let's see if we can get really in on it so you can see this reflection wiggle. It's just another way of doing it and I really like it. I'm coming here, center of the fan, the high point is engaged at the canvas where this meets the water. Then I'm gonna pull out and like wiggle, 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 wiggle. 
And then when I'm ready to temper it out, I go like that. It wiggle, 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 wiggle. Now I'm getting a little crazy with the wiggles, but that's the point. <laughs> All right, we're making these little, these little sort of wiggle, wiggle. They're fun to do. And then right here at the edge, you just pull down some reflection flat. The flan is flat. Handle is kind of angled towards the right. And I'm just making sure where that touches the water, I've got a little bit of that fan pulled out. Okay. You can see it's pretty fun, isn't it? Looks like a little, little bit of reflection is happening. A little bit of joy. Come here and, you know, it's just, it's just a little bit through here, right? Coming down. These are shorter little bushes. Not quite the big reflection. They don't do the big reflection. They might be there, but it's definitely a lot less. Here we go again. The green, green, green. We're going to go, ooh. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle. Shorter, shorter as it's coming down, right? Blending in. Blend in it. Blend those little wiggles in. It comes in the center. Are you guys loving it? I am. I think this is great. How's everybody doing today? Doing really good. You know? This is a really popular painting. We've got a really great crowd here with us today. So, you know, it's, we've been a little while since we broadcasted, isn't it? It has, hasn't it? Yeah. We're bringing these like down. You can see we're just making those little reflections. And then when we want to pull them down and blend them, we just pull the fan brush to the side. I'm so glad we have people today. Yeah, you know, I think I just got quiet because you, you've been cooking along. I've been painting. cooking because this is just fun and easy. Now, what I did there is I just moved the painting to do what? To make it easy for me. Don't move yourself to make it easy for the painting. The painting doesn't need a break. You do. So <laughs> make sure that when you're making adjustments to your art, and, and your physicality, that you're recognizing what you need out of it. Okay. That's pretty much how you get those really yummy, awesome, fantastic reflections in. I love it. Now. I love it too. Yay! <laughs> Next step. <laughs> Next step that we're going to do is we're going to put in the water part and that is going to take an artist knife and I will pick you could use the diamond you could use this knife let's do it with a Scotty knife okay so I'm gonna pull out this if you ever see these multi-angled knives that's what they're called they're called a Scotty knife and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna show you how to load a bead so you go scrape scrape and then you roll it along and you'll see that you've got a bead here that's the goal and what you're gonna want to do is have the edge of the knife be parallel and level to this surface you're going to tap it down level scrape a bead see the bead yeah all right tap 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 some of these reflections could be long right bead and the trick of these first is just to make sure that they're parallel to this line right here and then I am going to make them come out wider as they come closer then what we're going to do is we're going to come to the bead that we have and we're going to just pull down a bit yeah mm. That's all that is. Pull down a little bit. You can leave some, you know, fine. You're just trying to. Put some reflection on your water, right? Mm -hmm.
And if you feel like you've got to have something anywhere, you can always put it out there. So don't feel like you're ever stuck. So what you're trying to do is make a little run of reflections coming down the trees. I mean, into the water, showing the water. Yep. And it should be kind of fun and lovely. I do think, you know, remember to make these small here, wide them out as you go. Back into our fan brush. There it is. Rinse it out. Going to use the same size brush yeah. for the second layer. Now I'm going to put some snow on the trees. You guys ready for some snow? And that is just going to be the white on your brush. I'm going to dip in water. I'm going to make sure that it's wet enough to come off the brush okay. I'm going to do a very similar thing. I'm going to come up here to this tree and I'm going to just tap up just a little bit of this white. This I'm a little more delicate with because I don't want to put it everywhere. I'm not trying to remove the dark that I put in already. I'm trying to very lightly just tap up and down, create like this impression that the tops of some of these have caught on to some snow. See how that does? Yeah. Does that pretty easy first, doesn't it? Up and down. Where are we going to go crazy? Bound, up and down, up and down, up and down. Not all the way to the base. I'm going to leave some dark there at the shore. Here, here, here. Same thing. You know, I clearly have gotten some sort of allergy attack. You did, baby. Bless you. <laughs> it just came and got me. Tapping up and down across the tops of these little bushes, adding a little bit of snow, doesn't it? A little snow. Some nice little snow for the little bushes. Top of this tree. Now, tomorrow, we have that easy couple in the rain that's coming up. And this is going to be one hoot couple. So it's going to be real friendly if you've been wanting to do one of those sort of romantic in the rain paintings. And it's featured in cherry blossoms and kind of fun winter spring. That feel that that still kind of winter, but maybe turning into spring because I'm sure everybody's already over snow. <laughs> yeah. Especially so. those people in uh, Southern California. Well, they're, they're okay. But they'll still <laughs> like the cherry blossoms. They'll think it's pretty. <laughs> So we'll deal with some wet reflections. We'll do all that fun stuff and some easy ways of doing trees. So I'm coming down here. You can see I'm just adding that little bit on the top of the bushes. Woo! Fantastic. So now that I have that, you can see that I have these snowy pines. I have a reflection. I could be done here, but I really think a little bit of the snow all over it works. And my trick for that is to use a soft bodied acrylic. This is heavy bodied. That's soft body. And you can see the difference is how thick and stiff and robust it is. But you don't have to buy pro paint. You could just get Americana craft paint, okay? So in the bottles, the little bottles. I'm going to use one of my splattering tools. There's a link in the description to this. I also have a video on all the different ways to splatter and make stars. So if you don't have this tool, don't worry. I gotcha. My big recommendation is at this stage, practice your splatter. And you're going to just pull that back and add some snow. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. It's snowing all over our landscape, guys. There we go, pulling it back. How do you like your snow? That's great. Is it a flurry? Is it a blizzard? That's up to you. Flurry or blizzard? <laughs> <laughs> you decide. How heavy is the snow today? Is it a light sprinkling of the snow? Is it a big amount of snow? Now, at this stage of a painting, you have a very important job to do, and I'm looking for my favorite brush to do it with. I will have to grab just any old detail that I can find, though. I don't know where my monogram liner is. Oh, no. Okay, that's okay, though, because this will work just as well. This is a number one art sherp around. You just want a brush that gives you a fine point so you can write out your name. I'm going to take white paint. I'm going to come in the corner. I'm going to sign my name, and I'm going to say, you know, these are the last two paintings of 2019 over here at the Art Sherpa, and I think they're a fantastic way to close it out, close out the year, because I think that these just have that vibe. Oh, my gosh, look at what we did. The landscape for just a few minutes. See, it wasn't stressful. It wasn't hard. You just got to know the techniques. Follow the step-by-step absolutely know that you can do this. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really, really soon. Bye-bye.